Hello, my name's Dr Alan Kerry. Welcome to another podcast from South Essex GP Training. With me I have Dr Sunil Gupta and we're going to discuss the topic of how to improve our assertiveness skills. Sunil, what are the three areas that behaviour can be divided into? Behaviour can be divided into one, aggressive behaviour, where the idea is I win and you lose. Number two, passive behaviour, where the general principle is you win and I lose. And number three, assertiveness, where the general principle is I win and you win. Thank you. So can you say a few more words then about aggressive behaviour and passive behaviour? In aggressive behaviour, aggression is expressing your own rights, feelings, needs and opinions with no respect for the rights and feelings of others. You express your feelings in a demanding, angry way. You see your own needs as being more important than others. The aim of aggression is to win while ignoring the feelings of others. Although the short-term effects of aggression may seem rewarding, e.g. release of tension, sense of power, the longer-lasting effects are less beneficial, e.g. feeling guilty and resentment from people around you. In passive behaviour, this is about not expressing your rights, feelings, opinions and needs. This is where you bottle up your own feelings, give in to others and see yourself as having little to contribute. The aim of passive behaviour is to avoid conflict at all times and to please others. Again, there may be immediate positive effects of being passive, e.g. reduction of anxiety and avoiding guilt, etc. But again, the long-lasting effects may be negative, e.g. continuing loss of self-esteem, stress and anger, and it may cause others to become irritated by you and develop a lack of respect for you. So where does this non-assertive behaviour come from? Well, some thoughts about where non-assertive behaviour could come from is often from our experiences of growing up relationships and life difficulties. We may have been taught that we should always try to please others and put others' needs before our own. We may have learnt that if someone says or does something that we don't like, we should be quiet and try to avoid that person in the future. If our self-confidence was damaged by e.g. being teased at school or criticised at home, then as adults we may be more likely to react passively or aggressively in our relationships and at work rather than assertively. Relationship difficulties and experience of loss can also cause us to feel that we are unable to take control of our own life. Low self-esteem and feelings of worthlessness may make us feel guilty about taking care of our own needs. But although a person may have learned to act in a non-assertive way, the important point to make is that they can learn to become more assertive. So what does assertiveness involve? So being assertive allows you to engage respectfully with other people whilst also respecting your own needs. It involves the ability to communicate honestly, directly and openly with other people. Assertiveness involves being clear about what you feel, what you need and how it can be achieved. Assertiveness requires confident, open body language and the ability to communicate calmly without attacking another person. Assertiveness involves saying yes when you want to, and saying no when you mean no, rather than agreeing to do something just to please someone else. It involves deciding on and sticking to clear boundaries, being happy to defend your position, even if it provokes conflict. And and assertiveness involves being confident about handling conflict if it occurs. A few other words about assertiveness. Assertiveness involves understanding how to negotiate if two people want different outcomes. It's being able to talk openly about yourself and being able to listen to others. It's being able to give and receive positive and negative feedback. And assertiveness involves having a positive, optimistic outlook. Thank you. So are there, are there rules of assertiveness? Well, some people have come up with so-called the 10 rules of assertiveness. So... The rules of assertiveness, I have the right to, one, respect myself, who I am and what I do. Two, I have the right to recognise my own needs as an individual, which is separate from what is expected for me in roles such as being a wife or a husband or a partner or a parent or a daughter. I have the right to make clear I statements about how I feel and what I think. For example, I feel very uncomfortable with your decision. I have the right to allow myself to make mistakes recognise that it's normal to make mistakes. I have the right to change my mind if I choose. The sixth so-called rule is I, I have the right 
to ask for thinking time. For example, when people ask you to do something, you have the right to say, I would like to think about it and I'll let you know my decision. I have the right to allow myself to enjoy my successes and feel pleased about what I've done and share it with others. I have the right to ask for what I want rather than hoping someone will notice what I want. I have the right to recognise that I'm not responsible for the behaviour of other adults. You're only responsible for your own actions. And the tenth uh, rule is I have the right to respect other people and their right to be assertive in return. Thank you. And I want to talk about why we believe it's important to be assertive. Not being assertive could possibly increase the risk of depression because you've got this sense of feeling helpless with no control over your life. It may make you more resentful and angry at others for taking advantage of you. Not being assertive may make you feel frustrated about why did I let that thing happen. It may um, make you more, more angry and have worse temper. If you can't express anger appropriately, it can build up to temper outbursts. And not being assertive could possibly increase the risk of anxiety because you may avoid certain situations which make you feel uncomfortable and you may therefore miss out on activities, job opportunities, etc. Not being assertive can increase the prob risk of relationship difficulties because it can, be difficult, it, it can be difficult in relationships when individuals can't tell each other what they want and need or how the other person affects them. And not being assertive may increase the risk of stress-related problems because stress can have a negative impact on, on the body and assertiveness can be a good way of managing stress. What about body language? Is that important if we're trying to be assertive? Yes, an important part of assertiveness is an open, secure body language. The way you hold yourself has an impact on how you are perceived and treated. Passive body language will be the classical victim stance of hunched shoulders and avoidance of eye contact, while an aggressive stance is one with clenched fists, glaring eyes and intrusive body language. Assertive people generally stand upright but in a relaxed manner, looking people calmly in the eyes with open hands. A good first step to becoming more assertive is to consider your own body language through practising different types of body language I role-playing. With a friend or in front of a mirror, it may be worth trying different types of posture and body language as you imagine being the aggressor, the passive victim and finally assertive person. See what it feels like to change from being in a passive or aggressive stance to using assertive body language, just standing in a confident, calm way can feel empowering. So the next time you talk to someone, it may be worth trying to watch yourself. Where are you looking? How would you describe your body language? Is your voice clear and confident? Thank you. And can you say a few more words about assertive communication? Clear communication is an important part of assertiveness. This is where you show knowledge, feelings and needs. Knowledge is that you are able to understand and summarise the situation. Feelings are you can explain your feelings about the situation. And needs are you are able to explain clearly what you want or need, giving your reasons and any benefits to the other party. With assertive communication, it isn't just the content of what you say that counts, it's the way you put it across. It helps to be honest with yourself about your own feelings, to keep calm and stick to the point, be clear, specific and direct. If you meet objections, listen to the other person's point of view while ensuring that your message is clear. Try to offer alternative solutions if you can. Ask if you are unsure about something. If the other person tries to create a diversion, point this out calmly and repeat your message. You should use appropriate body language. Always respect the rights and point of view of the other person. Own your messages by using I, for example. It's more constructive to say, I don't agree with you, rather than you're wrong. And remember, you have the right to make mistakes, and so does everyone else. So finally, can you give us some techniques for assertiveness, and also the role of practice makes perfect in improving our assertiveness skills? So one of the techniques of assertiveness is DESC. Describe, express, specify, Clarify. So describe the actions or behaviour that you see as taking place. Express why that behaviour is an issue. 
specify the resulting actions or change of behaviour you, that you would like to affect. Clarify the consequences for failing to change behaviour or meet demands. Another technique is the broken record, where simply repeating your requests every time you are met with illegitimate resistance. However, when resistance continues, your request loses power every time you have to repeat them. In these cases, it's necessary to have some sanctions on ha hand. A third technique is called fogging, where you find some limited truth to agree with in what an antagonist is saying. More specifically, one can agree in part or agree in principle. Other techniques are, number four, negative inquiry, where you request further, more specific criticism. Number five, negative assertion, where you agree where there's agree where you agree with the criticism, but without letting up on your demands. And number six, I statements, which can be used to voice one's feelings and wishes from a personal position, without expressing a judgment about the other person or blaming one's feelings on them. Practicing is very important, so some tips may be: with a friend, practice being assertive in a certain situation, such as refusing to take on extra work or giving constructive criticism to a colleague. Explain the scenario to your friend, using role play, go through the situation, making your points clearly with your friend responding as the other person. For example, I'd be delighted to help you with that piece of work, but we need to agree what other current projects you don't want me to do, because I won't have time to do them all. Afterwards, ask your friend to tell you what went well and where you could have made improvements. Try the situation again, then swap roles to see the other person's point of view. Once you've practiced being more assertive, think through your new techniques before entering a situation that requires assertiveness. Imagine your body language, work out how to deliver your message clearly, and imagine how you'll react to any possible responses. That's excellent. So in summary then, being assertive allows us to engage respectfully with other people while also respecting our own needs. Important parts of assertiveness are open, secure body language and clear communication. And there are techniques available to help us improve our assertiveness skills. Both Sunil and I would like to thank you for listening and we hope you'll listen to some of the other podcasts from South Essex GP Training website. <laughs>